Hi, this is Munson from Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called Shake It Baby by John Lee Hooker. And it starts out around some chords, and it almost feels a lot like kind of an abbreviated 12-bar blues form at the very beginning around the licks, and we'll talk about the licks in a minute. But it starts on an E major chord, and the way you play E major, first finger is going to go to the G string on the first fret, second finger is going to go A string on the second fret, and the third finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like an E major chord. It sounds really, really happy. And we come out, start out the tune with kind of four A, right, E majors, and then we're going to be going to an A major chord. And the way you play A major, first finger goes to the D string on the second fret, second finger is going to go G string on the second fret, and the third finger is going to go to the B string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like an A major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And we're going to end up doing the A major twice from the beginning, and then we do an E major. And then we go to a B7 chord, and the way you play B7, first finger is going to go D string on the first fret, second finger is going to go to the A string on the second fret, third finger on the G string on the second fret, and the pinky on the B or on the E string on the second fret. So you kind of got first finger on D, second on the A, third on the G, pinky on the high E, and you want to strum kind of the, just the A string to the high E string to get the clear sound out of that. It's called B7, it sounds really, really nasty. You want to try and avoid the E string and all, or the low E string at all costs. And what I'm actually doing is kind of running my second finger into it to mute it out. So I just don't hear it. And then from the B7, then we're going to be going to an A major. And then we go back to the E major. And then we do another E major. And there are a lot of really cool licks of, uh, around these, but, but uh, one of my favorite ways to kind of play through a tune like this in 4-4 is just to use a down, down, up, up, down, up strum pattern. So we just took the E and just tried that a lot. You'd have down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. So we tried that through our form from the beginning. We got E down, up. Basically, our verse and our chorus is all going to be the E major, so we, we just stay on the D doing the down, down, up, up, down, up. But there are a lot of really cool licks that kind of happen through, through this tune. And it kind of starts out with a really cool lick around the E, where you go 2nd fret on the A, and then open D, and then 2nd fret on the D. And then there's this really cool little hit where you could go 5th fret on, on the B string and 4th fret on the G string at the same time. And if you kind of play those notes together, and kind of do a slide. So I'm kind of playing them and keeping enough pressure in, into the string to kind of get the sound to kind of carry. So you got two, oh, two, five, and four slide. 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 Two, oh, two. And then when you get to your A chord, then it kind of sounds like you're going open D, and then second fret on the D, and then open G, and then second fret on the G. And then what I like to do is I kind of go go to on the, the E and the B on the fifth frets together, kind of like a mini bar I'm doing with the pinky, and do the same slide lick. So you'd have two, oh, I mean, oh, it's still starting on two. So then on the A chord, you kind of start second fret on the D string twice, and then open G, and then second fret on the G, and then you could go 5th fret on the E and the B string at together at the same time and kind of do a really similar slide with, with the pinky. So you got 2, 2, oh, 2, slide, 2, 2, oh, 2, slide, 2, 2, oh, 2, slide, 2, 2, oh, 2, two on, on the A. And then basically like you'd be going back to the E lick, that 2, oh, 2, 5, 4 for the E. And then there's a really cool lick that kind of turns up for that B7 where you go 4 on the D string twice and then 2nd fret on the G and then 4th fret on the G and then we're kind of going back to the A so then you go back to the 2, 2, 2, open, 2 on the G string and then it's almost like the, like the first lick you go 2 on the D but then we go 2nd on the A twice and then open, 2 and then we kind of do that 5, 4 slide again. So that could be cool to kind of add that in. So you got two, oh, two, five, four, 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 two, two, oh, two, fives, two, two, oh, two, fives, two, two, oh, two, five, four, 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 two, four, two, 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 oh, two, 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 oh, two, five, four. That's kind of a slide. 
And then there's a really cool lick that comes in after that where you go to the A string and we're going to do a hammer on the 2nd fret and then kind of play 2nd fret again and then do that again. We got open 2 hammer on, so I'm kind of playing the open A string and kind of putting down my finger to get the sound to carry to that note and then kind of replay it, the note. So I got open 2 hammer on 2, open 2 hammer on 2, open 2 hammer on 2 and then you go 3rd on the low E and kind of do a slide into nothing. <laughs> so you got O two two O two two O two two O two two three slide, and if you wanted to at the end of that slide, I'd probably play open E, because then you're going into the E majors where you could just do that down down up up down up, but what it really kind of feels like is almost like you're doing a bass up 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 on those chords, and really it's just on the E major. So if you took the E major and just did the low E for the bass and then went up. like and if you wanted to you could even kind of kill the strings after that and kind of mute it so you'd have like a low E bass up uh, kill it like a really cool thing to kind of try through the tune and then there's some licks that it almost sounds like John Lee Hooker's kind of laying in around the E chord and, and one, the first one that kind of happens is where you go low E string and then you kind of do it down on the chord but then we go open B and then third on the B and then open E like open high E so you got E chord O3 O bass licks that happen later on in the tune around the E where you could go open E and then second on the A and then open D and then second on the D. And that happens a lot through that tune though like where you got O2 So one thing you could try and do is kind of do that lick around the E chord. So you could take the E and do the low E for the bass, and then play second on the A, and then open D, so you have to kind of lift third finger, and then kind of put third finger back on the D string for the second. So you'd have open E chord, two, O, two, O, E chord, two, O, two, O, E chord, two, O, two, O, E chord, two, O, two. But the main idea behind a lot of the solos is actually something called E minor pentatonic scale. And what a pentatonic scale is, is pent means five. And what a pentatonic scale is, is where you're playing five particular notes. And on the guitar, this is one of my favorite pentatonic scales because you're playing E's and G's and A's and B's and D's. So basically, a pentatonic scale is actually all your open strings. <laughs> so you've got E and A and D and G and B and E. But there are a lot of other places where you could play that scale across the guitar. And if we were going to kind of dissect the guitar into sections, the next piece would, would be going third fret on the low E, and then second on the A, second on the D, second on the G string, second on the third fret on the B string, or, or third fret on the B string, and then third fret on the high E. So you'd be from the low to the high, you're going three, two, 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 three, three. And the note you're actually playing, you're playing G and B and E and A. D and then G. And then if we go to the next piece, then you'd be going fifth fret on every single string except for the G is going to be four. So you got fifth on the E, fifth on the A, fifth on the D, G string four, and then fifth fret on the B string, and then fifth fret on the high E string. And the notes you're actually playing are A and D and G and B and E and then A. So all those are part of the scale too. And then the next piece would be going all the seventh frets except for B's eight. So you got seven, and then seven, and then seven, and then seven, and then on the B you go to A, and then on the high you're back to seven. And the notes you're playing, you're actually going B, and E, and A, and D, and G, and then B. So we're really playing the same five notes, just a different place. And then from there you'd be going to tenth fret on the low E for a D note, ten on the A for a G note, nine on the D for, for a B note, nine on the G for an E note, and then back to 10 on the B string for an A note, and then 10 on the high E for a D note. 
So you got 10, 10, 9, 9, 10, 10, or you could be thinking D and G and then B and then E and then A and then D. And then when you get to the 12th fret, it's almost like everything's starting over again because the note names are the same as the open strings. So on the 12, you've got E and A and D and G and B and E, and everybody on the 12 is kind of part of it. And then over the 12th fret, we'd be adding 12 to all the things that we did further down to find those same notes. So over the top, you've got 15 on the low E, which is a G note, 14 on the A, which is a, 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 a B note, 14 on the D, which is an E note, 14 on the G, which is a, a A note, 15 on the B is a B is a D note, and 15 on the high is a G note. So you're going 15, 14, 14, 14, 15, 15, or, but you're playing G, B, E, A, D, G. And all those notes can sound really good to kind of jam over the top. And one of my favorite patterns actually of this is the one that starts from 12th fret on the low E. But what John Lee Hooker is doing a lot of is kind of working with the chord and then playing around with those pentatonic notes around it. So you can almost kind of make a game with yourself. And, and down here, we're, we're kind of doing that open 3, open 2, O2, O2, O3, O3 on the high E. So one thing you may want to play around with is kind of working off that idea of kind of the bass chord lick idea that John Lee Hooker has when we're doing that low E bass chord O3 open E. You could really kind of play around with all kinds of pentatonic um, licks with that. And just to go over a couple of them, uh, one thing you could do is you could do hammer-ons from open to, to the notes of the pentatonic. So open 3, hammer on the low E, O2 on the A, O2 on the D, O2 on the G, O3 on the B, O3 on the high E. Or you could do pull-offs where you go three and then kind of pull off to the open string on the, on the low E. And then you have second open on the A, second open on the D, second open on the G, third open on the B, and then third open on the high E. So one, one other thing you could do is you could kind of work bends with those notes where you kind of play the note and kind of press in and to and up onto the guitar at the same time. So kind of pressing into the guitar or pulling down when you get to the thick string. But, but basically the idea would be like you could go bass chord and then do a lick. So then kind of thicken pentatonic notes. I know that's kind of open-ended, but I think that could be a cool thing to play around with with this tune, is kind of playing around with those pentatonic notes to kind of try, try and play around with like chord lick ideas. Jimi Hendrix is a master of this as well, just kind of do, working around chords and then working licks around them, like with pentatonic. So that, that, that's basically the, how you could play Shake It Baby by John Lee Hooker. And if you're looking for more chord ideas, you may want to check out the, the video I made on Funky Broadway, where it has a lot of E7 chords and, and uh, E9 chords that you could kind of play around with the same tune, actually in the same key. But that's basically how you could play Shake It Baby by John Lee Hooker. So good luck!